you so much for joining me for day 14 of Art with Miss Choate. For today, what we're going to be doing is sticking on this idea of lines and of jumping around a lot like we were doing at the beginning. I just want to do a little bit more on these lines. And so we're going to be combining today straight, zigzag, loop-de-loop, -loop, all the kind of lines that you know we're gonna be putting on the paper, filling up the entire paper, and then we're gonna be coloring it in. And that's where you get to have a little bit of creativity, a little bit of like, what do you wanna use? Do you have sidewalk chalk that hasn't been touched because you can't go outside because you know your area, there's too many people? Or do you have paint that you just found yesterday? or markers that have been sitting in some water, so now maybe they're a little more hydrated. What do you have laying around? Use anything. Another thing I just thought of, food coloring that's in your pantry. I know you might be saving it for Easter for dying eggs, but you could use a little bit of that in water today. And so anyways, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is drawing our lines. And I want you to be thoughtful in the lines that you use. So sometimes I'll review with a younger student the different types of lines. So we have straight lines. We have zigzag lines. We have dotted lines. We have wavy lines. What other kind of lines can you think about? There's the loop-de-loops. And keep thinking, what kind of lines can you make? We want to put a lot of different lines on the page. Now we have more extreme zigzags. And you can keep on going with this thought process. What kind of lines do we have? Remember, a line has a start and an end. I always tell it to my students, a start and an end. A start and an end. A start and an end. There are so many variations of lines, but make sure you know a shape is not a line because it's connected. So that is not a line. And the last line I can think of is what I call a castle line. So it goes up, over, down, over, up, over, down. And sometimes saying that can help. Over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down. So think about all these different types of lines and that's what we're gonna be filling our page with. And you can review those lines as you start making your piece. So I want you to think about having the lines going across the page. If you ask a student to fill up your lines with pages or your page with lines, you're gonna have just little things, you know, maybe going straight across. I want you to think about space, talk to your student about space. So maybe we can put some wavy lines going from this side of the page to the top. And maybe we follow that wavy line like we've done in our Zen tangles, like we've done in a couple other projects. We use the things that we've learned. We're not recreating the wheel. We are going off of other areas. So maybe now I can do a zigzag going from here to here. And you can think about how they interact with the other lines. Maybe they go through, maybe they don't. I'm gonna have it break up my wavy line. And this is a huge zigzag line. And then you need to review what are the other lines. Maybe I do another zigzag right on top of it. Or maybe I change it up and there's only one zigzag. And what other lines did we have? We have straight lines. So maybe I fill up this area with some straight lines. And maybe over here. I like that idea. And you're gonna fill it up as much or as little as you want. So maybe in here, I can have some of those loop-de-loops we talked about. And when you have these lines run off the page, I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting. If I'm having that loop run off, but then it starts back up. It's like it's invisible up here. Maybe I have one more up here. And it's gonna be invisible and back on the page. Once you're happy, if you like this blank area down here, 
then go for it. Sometimes it's nice to leave a nice area to breathe. If you have too much on your page, it makes you feel, oh, there's too much, too much. Now you could go over your pencil with a marker, up to you a color or color pencil or crayon. Uh, for younger kids, it would be really nice if you are going to paint, you can outline your lines in crayon. It helps add a barrier so the paint doesn't get past because it's a wax, so it actually like divides up your page. So crayon would be a nice choice for younger kids. I know my older kids really like Sharpie, so this would be a great time to break out those Sharpies. A little tip, if you are going to use Sharpies and you care about your table, put something underneath it. You always can get the Sharpie off with rubbing alcohol. It will come off of most surfaces, but so you don't have to scrub and use some elbow grease, just put an extra piece of paper underneath. do crayon there and think about the colors you're choosing always 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 think about those colors how do they act together do you like them together sometimes it's fun to limit yourself only pull out three colors from your crayon box and only use those Remember, if you think this is too easy for you, make it more challenging. You could do value. So maybe each of these lines goes from dark blue to light blue. So maybe this is a value scale in here. You can always make a simple idea more challenging for yourself. Maybe you add elements of collage, cutting out shapes and filling in. So some shapes are colored with paint and some are have uh, images in them. This is where it's art, be creative. I'm telling you one thing to do, doesn't mean you have to listen to all my ideas. Or maybe you combine some of my other videos with this project. Maybe it morphs into your own thing. I would love that. My goal is that I just teach you some new techniques and then they become your own. As my students know, I never like to finish a project for them or, you know, for them to see because there's no, this is the answer. There's no, this is the end piece. How do you want it to look? So now that I'm done doing my outlines, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna paint. Remember, if you don't have paint, any of the supplies you have at home, you know, sidewalk chalk that's not getting used right now, what happens when you put sidewalk chalk on here and then you put water on top, it actually becomes like a pigment. Remember, be thoughtful with your colors. Be really careful with your control of your paintbrush. Remember to touch the paint gently like you're petting a cat and bring it to your page gently. We never want the bristles to get that paint on it. It's just gonna cause more wear and tear. And right now we can't really be ordering more supplies. So what you have at home, it's gold. And remember when you wanna come back, rinse it off gently tap it on the side until you see it running clear. It's still having pink come out of it. There we go, now it's clear. And you could always pat that on a paper towel or, or something next to you. Let's see. And you could also layer it on top. So remember, if you're not finding this challenging, create a, gra a gradation, so light pink to dark pink. So maybe I'll start that right there. Make sure you see it run clear before you switch colors. I'm gonna go to this purple to get a nice dark pink down here. You can even add a little bit of blue to really get that darkness. 
And you can see it's already being elevated. I'm gonna touch a little bit of blue to it. Remember, if you're free, use your finger, use a dry brush next to you. Whatever you need to to get the job done. I'm liking how that's looking. And now maybe I go on to my next section. Maybe I do a couple sections in this yellow because I'm really liking how bright that is. And look how the paint goes on top. It can't really go on top of the crayon. It gets rejected. Do that whole area. And that time I didn't even have to dip into the water. My brush has enough water on it still, so I didn't have to do that. Now I'm gonna add some darker yellow. Maybe I'll go dark yellow up to a brighter yellow. I can also add some orange to this one. And again, see how you can push it. Oops. And if I make a mistake like that, I'm not gonna cry over it. I'm just gonna decide I'm gonna have something darker than yellow down there to cover it up. So if I'm done with that area, maybe I'll show you how I'm gonna correct that. So anything darker than yellow, so maybe I'll go with a blue down here. And it's basically being covered. Embrace the mistakes because no one other than you is gonna know it was a mistake. Somebody else might think that was on purpose. So no need to get upset about it. No need to grab a new piece of paper. I want you to challenge yourself on these projects to only use one piece of paper. Or, you know, if you finish a project, of course, get another piece of paper and start another one. But if it's because you messed up, I challenge you, do not give up on your paper. Learn from the mistakes, turn them into something beautiful. Like I said, no one's around to know that it was a mistake. Unless you go around telling people it was a mistake, no one's gonna know. So now I just covered my whole bottom in blue and I can go in and add other values, go light to dark. This is a good project just to cover your whole page with. And even a younger student learning how to do some gradation, how to go from dark to light. It's a good one to practice on. You even add a little bit of black. And you can play and see what happens when you add the white paint up here. And you're gonna keep on going. And here we go, here I have both my examples. You could go back in even with your paint, add other lines. Here I was playing with mixing some brown and with my greens, maybe even put yellow on top of your orange, add more lines. It's up to you, but I recommend that you do each area a color and play with those colors, mix them. Remember, even if you're using color pencils, they blend together, put them on top of each other. If you're using crayons, encourage kindergartners love blending those crayons on top of each other. So what happens when you put the orangish red on top of that blue? they're gonna act like it's magic and that's wonderful. So encourage them to play, encourage them to see what can they create. Encourage to take your time. This is a great project not to rush on, but it's not high stakes. There's no right and wrong and they know that. Just practice your lines and painting or drawing or coloring. 
Thank you for joining me for this Thursday in the studio. Pepper wanted to say hello again and share with me, you're in my way, you silly girl. Share with me your images of the work that you made today. Post it on any of my social media and I will see it. And as always, I, feedback is how we grow. When we share with each other, when we ask each other for advice or opinions, that's how we get better. If we're all just isolated right now and not sharing, then we're not gonna grow. We're just gonna know what we know and not expand past that. So please do share with me, share with each other, ask a brother or a sister or anyone you're in the house with, what do they think about it? What could be better? It's okay to ask people what could be better and it's okay to listen or not to listen to them. That's your choice, you're the artist. So I hope you had fun today. I hope you learned something and tune in with us tomorrow. I think we might do another game day. So be sure to tune in Friday and that's gonna be three whole weeks. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And don't forget, we also have things on the weekend. So, all right, have a good day, bye.